Greetings, I hope you're doing well. Argina Abundance here. And today we're going to be formatting and converting your ebook into a paperback book using Amazon KDP and OpenOffice. So this is for the authors who are publishing their book and they already have their ebook published. If you want to learn how to format your ebook, I do have a video and I'll link it in the description below on how to do that format your ebook. But this is for the paperback book. So if that's what you're here to do, let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is go to the book that you want to create the paperback book for. Like I said, you should already have your ebook finished. And we want to go to um, create paperback. Of course, um, this is already, I already started it. So that's why it's looking like that. So let's get started. So we'll go to continue setup. Okay, so next you'll come to paperback details. So most of this stuff will already be filled in um, if you already did your ebook. So we're just trying to streamline here. So book title, that's already going to be filled in when you get to it. Um, the author is most likely already going to be filled in. If not, you can just plug that stuff in. If it's a series, you can add your series details and things like that. Contributors, they have, if you want to add more people, more people that worked on the book. Your description, if you want to add anything or change anything up, if it's different from the ebook version to the paperback, you can do that. Um, also, if this is a public domain work, like if it's not original work, um, you want to select this, but I'm most likely assuming that you own the copyright. So just select that. Um, explicit images, if you know what I mean, if it's a, a romance novel or something a little bit, you know, risque, you can select your primary audience. If it's a children's book or something, I would uh, select this as far as the reading age, but it is optional. Primary marketplace, I'm in the U.S., so I selected Amazon.com. Categories, these might also already be selected. I can't quite remember if I did add them. Um, they might be different for the paperback, but um, you would just go to edit categories and add whatever categories are most relevant to your particular book. Okay, and if it's a journal or a notebook or a calendar or something, or a low content book, you want to select that. Or if it's a large print book, which I'm thinking will be a children's book as well, you will select that. Keywords, I believe they transfer them, but they might not. So you might have to go in and add your keywords, which are just um, words that your customer will type in to Amazon to find your book. So you want to make sure they're relevant to whatever your book is about. So you get seven keywords and the more words you can get in there, the better. And they are optional, but I really recommend it. Publication date. If your book was previously published, like if you already had a paperback published back in the day, you would select that. But I'm about to release this particular paperback book now. Even if you release the ebook version, this is a completely different version. So don't worry about that. You're releasing this now because your ebook version could be released at a different time. This is a whole different book. So I wouldn't concern myself with that. Um, are you doing a pre-release or are you releasing it now? But I'm going to release my book for sale now. So I will select that. Then save and continue. Next, I'm going to get the free ISBN. Your ISBN is the, uh, what is it called? International Standard Book Number. And unless you're a, you know, an, a publisher and you want to um, get your own ISBN, I do recommend the free ISBN. I've always been using them. And you can still publish your book on Ingram Spark and other paperbacks um, if you don't do the expanded distribution. And I don't do that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be using the free ISBN. I haven't purchased one before personally. I'm a self-publisher and I just um, do it. I'm not a public, you know, 
I just published my books myself, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. I'm going to just get the free ISBN. Um, you can also look more into that if that's what you want to do. I'm not no expert in that. So print options. Um, since I'm doing a regular nonfiction book, it is recommended that black and white for nonfiction. So I'm going to go with black and white paper interior. Trim size, I'll do six by nine, even though it is kind of a workbook, so maybe I should change it up, but it's too late because I've already ordered my cover. Now, let's come to this part. The reason I am using Open Office, because there are other options like Google Docs that I would like to do, and I'm going to do a video on that, so. Um, but I'm using Open Office because you can change the trim size to whatever you want. So that's why I particularly use Open Office, and it's free. So six by nine. And when it comes to the bleed settings, this is basically, I'm going to show you better than I can tell. You already pulled it up. So this is like when you do the example and you do the preview of your book, we'll show that in a minute. You'll see, you see how these, this border is. If you do no bleed, that's on the left. So this is no bleed. Everything is going to be inside the lines. If you don't have any pictures, I would just go with no bleed. It, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't really affect anything. But if you are doing something with pictures, it does. Um, this is what it will look like. It will be like outside of those uh, areas. And that's with the bleed. I'm going to do with bleed. I do have some pictures because it's a tutorial type book. Um, especially towards the end when I get more practical into it. So... If you're doing any kind of children's book, definitely do it with bleed. Um, but if you don't have any pictures or anything, I wouldn't worry too much about it. And I would do no bleed. But it wouldn't hurt if you did do no bleed because it would just be like, okay. But basically, they're going to make sure that everything's inside and covered when you um, review it. So I'm doing the matte. You can do the glossy if you desire. Um, matte is just more of a... Uh, oh, rough finish glossy is more shiny and polished and things like that so let's go to manuscript let's get into it so if you don't have open office it's a free software that you can get on your computer and yeah it's right here um you can use that this is the official website openoffice.org and that's where i downloaded mine from i do have a mac um they have versions for windows as well so it is legit and I've used it for years and it's um, free. So let's open open office. I already have it downloaded. So let's go up in here. Okay, so what you want to do is open your document if you don't already have it open. Act like I'm doing this as an example. So this is my document. So pull it from wherever you can. With open office, you should be able to open a document as um, long as it's a doc. So even if you had it on Google Docs or another system, just save it as a any kind of Microsoft Word document because OpenOffice is basically like Microsoft Word, but the free version, which is really cool. So let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do is change that trim size that we see over here. So this is the most typical size. Most of my paperback books are the size. Like I said, I should have went up a size being that it's a workbook, but... I'm looking at my book right now in a six by nine and that's a pretty decent size. Um, it's the most standard size book. You can select different sizes if you go in here. So if you want it bigger, if it's a children's book or something, or if you want it smaller, even if the smallest it looks like is five by eight, or you can actually do custom, but you won't be able to do expanded distribution on your book. So lots of options. So um, let's get into format and I believe it is page yes format page sorry no file go to format page <laughs> and then this is what you want to do you want to change the format from eight to six by nine so it will be six inches by nine inches and sounds good to me so this is what it looks like you can also adjust the margins, but I'm not going to touch those. Um, I'm just going to have it the way it is. So this is an example. And then as far as formatting, if you want to insert any page breaks, so say if I did this, 
and I wanted this to start on a new page, I would just go back and hit um, that. And then I would go to insert, manual break, then page break. A page break makes it make sure it starts on the next page. So if you want anything to start on the next page, that's what I would do. So for example, if I wanted that to start on the next page, I would go to insert, manual break, page break. And it will start on the next page, but you know all those empty pages in between. So I just want to give you an example. So that's basically how you format that. And you will just go through and do all that, how you want them to start on the next pages. Um, and this should already be pretty much formatted from your ebook. So you, you should already have your titles and everything. I'm, I'm really hoping that. So say if I wanted to start that on a new page which I do because it's an exercise so go to insert manual break page break and yeah that's how you start them on the next pages so just spruce it up make sure it's all good um, make sure your hittings are hitting insert manual break page break okay so that's how you would do it that's how you would format it pretty much um, this is how you change what you want it to be. So you see how that's a chapter starting. That's a hitting one. So all my hitting ones start right here. And that's why they're outlined in that table of contents like that. The rest of them are just bold. But yeah. So that's hitting one. This is just a regular paragraph. So it's under default. This is just like the regular words inside the book. And you can do subheadings and things like that. Hitting two would be a little smaller. So if I did do hitting two, that's what it would look like. It will make it a little bigger. Actually, I might go in and do that too. But yes, that's pretty much how you format your book. And let's adjust any images we have. We do have some images further down. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I know this is a little much. I have a lot of them in here. And I already have this... Uh, upload it I mean save so I can upload it for an example but let's do another let's do another one all right so you clicked on your image then you just want to make sure it's inside those margins all right then when you're done sprucing up your book and editing make sure everything looks the way you want to you have your headings and everything you're good to go everything looks good and you'll be able to definitely see once you upload it to um to kdp you'll be able to see what it looks like so at, once you're done you go to file then you go to export as a pdf okay and then you push export and it's good to go i'm not going to do that because i already did it okay and once you do that you want to go back to your KDP and upload that. My manuscript's already uploaded. I haven't looked at it yet, so hopefully it's not all sad. But you just got to keep going back and playing with it. You might have to re-upload it a few times. Also, I ordered a cover, um, but you can do a cover creator. I have used this. It kind of looks a mess, so I went on Fiverr this time. Okay, so you can, like, choose your design. You don't have to... Do this and you can like upload something and do your own little thing in here if you can work with it. If it's a real simple book, you're trying to get out there, there you go. But <laughs> I got annoyed with it. So um because it wasn't the colors I wanted, it got that real pretty blue on that cover. And I was just like, no, it's not going to work. But you could just upload the cover, your picture, and then keep it moving. It's really easy. Okay. And then bring you back to where you were. That's good. All right. So... I'm going to upload my cover I already have. I got it from Fiverr. All right. Hopefully it works. I told him it's six by nine and I told him what to put on there, but I didn't. I'm going to get it revised. I don't like it uh, because I want it to be bold in some places and he didn't. So let's see. Did you use AI generated content? This is new. I mean, I haven't published a paperback in a minute and this is definitely new. No, I haven't used AI. Okay, save and continue. Uh-oh, book requires an ISBN. Oh, I have to select that. Yes, I do want that. Assign my ISBN. It's assigned. All right, 
Now let's see what it looks like, y'all. This is the name of the game. Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. He did the right thing. But like I said, I'm going to get him to revise this on Fiverr because I, I want this bold up here. I want these bold. I mean, come on now. He could have took some time and did that, but it is what it is. But yes, that looks good. And if you don't want something to start on a certain page, but that looks good. Okay, we're going to have to um, take that table contents out. Like I said, we're going to add some page numbers in here. But besides that, that's pretty much good to go. Um, besides the page numbers and that, everything else looks good. The images are inside the margins. So everything looks good. Yep. All right. So that's it pretty much. That's how you do it. Um, exit print previewer. Let's uh, go to the end. Let's go to the end. Let's act like we're going to release it. Save and continue. See what's happening next. Summary. All right. Your printing cost, 230 per book. Mine might be a little bit more because I do have a lot of images towards the end. Save and continue. And it tells you bleed, six by nine, page count. If you're doing a cover, you're going to need the, this information right here. Okay. So all territories, definitely. I'm not doing expanded distribution. Um, only because I want this book, this will be my first book that I'm going to do a paperback on draft to digital and Ingram spark or whatever. Um, so let's see, 11, 11. I want to try, uh, expanded distribution for paperback. So I'm not doing that this time. I have, ex uh, did this last time, but I'm just going to have it on their platform and then go back and go on Ingram spark so they can kind of promote it to those other book retailers and I can see you know how that does so that's pretty much it you just put your price in and you're good to go if you want to do individual territories that's your business so I, I get them all and then if you want expanded distribution Amazon will not push your book out it will be available if another bookstore they uh, or somebody you know wants to get it but as far as them promoting it and pushing it to all those other retailers they're not doing all that so that's why I do want to get on um draft to digital and see how I can publish the paperback book there as well as on Amazon as long as you do it on Amazon first always start with Amazon but thank you for watching um sorry about the page numbers and I'll see you in the next video let me know what questions you have in the comments below and um a good luck and good happy selling I hope you're going to do well It's not a game.